as technical charts seem to suggest, are we looking at a market that is overbought right now where the market has been struggling to gain upward momentum this week after last week's strong moves higher? Thank you, Alicia. Basically, looking at the market now, we seem to be seeing some sort of correction. As you noted there, basically, it's more of a fundamentals, trying to see whether we can get an all-new support level. Well, you might see some bit of a correction or a downward behavior, but uh, most likely you'll have a bit of a support because uh, we're beginning to see foreigners beginning to come in and also corporate actions that are beginning to create a lot of interest in the market. Mm -hmm. What kind of further upside are you seeing uh, by this market by the year? And some out there really believing that there's at least 25% uh, uh, more to run in the year uh, in the uh, in the year end year well, there's already a lot of uh, sentiments, basically people talking about us being able to hit a uh, 5,000 mark by the close of the year. And uh, hopefully, if at all, the companies beginning to, begin, to, uh, begin to announce corporate results that are going to be fairly uh, profitable or uh, encouraging, we are going to see a lot of that. Though, as of now, we are seeing a lot of interest in the market, basically looking at interest rates coming down. There's a lot of interest now in uh, risk taking and uh, mm -hmm. also uh, flight to quality. And because of that, we might see a lot of uh, demand streaming in. Only that as of now, we should expect some more correction because uh, in the last yeah. one, week we've seen quite a rise well uh, as you were saying it's banks that have stealing have been stealing quite a bit of attention Barclays Bank of Kenya one of them uh, releasing results today posted a 5% growth in pre-tax profit uh, for its first half uh, this year to 4.75 billion shillings from a year ago that's as much of the detail that's emerged on our end have you had a chance to look at those numbers in greater detail well, uh, the, 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 the corporate announcement is going on as we speak, so be, the results are, not, are yet to reach some of us. But basically, we are expecting them to announce some positive uh, results, uh, only that it seems uh, they are still single digit. But uh, looking at them in terms of uh, looking forward, basically their dividend payout is going to create a lot of interest in the stock. And uh, it seems to be getting a support level at 67 shillings. Well, for now, looking at current activity, uh, exerting some pressure uh, on the overall markets picture was KCB yesterday, the bank's third rights issue in six years, uh, falling short of expectation, short of full subscription. They managed, uh, they managed to just see subscription at about 84% or so. What did you make of that uh, under subscription that came to the fore first of all? Well, thank you, Alicia. Basically, looking at KCB, that's one of the stock basically which has been a bit of a concern, mostly because of uh, the rights issue. I guess what we seem to be seeing in terms of the, the signals that are being sent by investors is that right now they are not really looking into the long term because the rights issue is more of a capital balance sheet uh, strengthening aspect, and uh, and uh, the, the the revenues or, re or re results that may come out of that may not be felt immediately. And because of that, we saw an 82% uptick, and uh, even it's beginning to affect the share price because we saw it uh, uh, dropping slightly. Mm -hmm. Though right now. I guess the challenge for, for KCB is to be able to convert that and be able to see how it's going to be able to affect their bottom line immediately. Well, added to that, some have highlighted that it's not altogether a bad thing that they weren't fully subscribed here because they were going to be overcapitalized if they had that full subscription of 15 billion shillings. Do you share that sentiment? Well, in terms of capitalization, yes, uh, K KCB has enjoyed uh, a lot of uh, the, 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 the top uh, notch in terms of how they behave in terms of the capitalization. And because of uh, the rights issue, well, they would be very well positioned. Only that as at now, looking at how they are in terms of the region, in terms of the country, the branch network, ATM uh, coverage, basically calls for them to have that kind of capitalization. And uh, their interest, especially into going into things like real estate, will require them to be very well positioned. And uh, because of that, it seems that it's, it's a very good, uh, very good stock for now. And, but, uh, uh, though right now I think it would still fall in the category of uh, long term basically because of the number of shares that are going to be having issued in the market. Expansion plans aside, let's focus in on uh, some of its lending capacity because the bank now has the capacity, it says, to double its loan book. It, this in a context where lending rates have slowly but uh, surely been coming down. Uh, any concern from your end about the quality of loans we're set to see moving forward where banks may have to push loans to actually compensate for lost interest income? Well, basically, yes, yeah, that's a good observation there. All, as, as of now, most of the eyes have been looking at uh, the C Credit Reference Bureau, which uh, would be able to help them to be able to uh, create better lending books. And because of that, we are hoping they're going to be able to ride on that to be able to still strengthen their loan book. But uh, one of the major concerns, especially when you're seeing a bullish market behavior, when you're seeing uh, uh, sentiments in terms of the economy being very pro positive, is uh, for them to be very generous with their loans. And uh, that, of, of course, creates a risk in terms of default rate. And uh, it's one of the factors that they might, must be 
able to be very concerned about, but uh, their strategy of going into asset-backed financing is going to be able to still strengthen their ability to be able to lend. Well, uh, let's look at uh, what's happening with uh, one of your other banks where it's in this context that uh, we see banks becoming innovative. Uh, Co-op banks, Kingdom Securities, which is the stockbroking arm of the bank, has broken ground and started uh, making profits for the parent company. Impact on groups' earnings moving forward for that institution specifically? Well, uh, that's a good observation. Basically, Cobank, Bank, even the share price, the way it has been behaving in the recent past, is already indicative of uh, a lot of positive sentiments. Well, uh, looking at it in terms of their quarterly earnings and hopefully their half-year results, they have, they have been very fairly positive and you're expecting almost a, a double-digit performance in terms of how they grow. And looking at their investment banking side, it's uh, fairly positive that mm -hmm. we're seeing uh, the, that that area is beginning to, beginning to bring some bit of profit because it was one of their concerns, especially after they ventured into that yeah. industry. And hopefully, once they're able to be able to tap into that they are going to be very well positioned to be able to grow cfc stand back just very quickly another bank that's going down a, a similar route in terms of innovation it's separating its long and short-term insurance uh, businesses into general and life insurances and also intends to list them separately on the boards by the end of the year to what extent are you seeing this as a move to unlocking value for shareholders well, looking at it in terms of an, an option, uh, an avenue to unlock value for the shareholders is a very good uh, approach in terms of how they're being able to segregate their business. I guess as at now, the approach for most of the, the banks we're seeing is more of a financial warehouse, but uh, for CFC Standbeek, I guess they're seeing they're not being able to specialize as such, looking at it from the broader picture in terms of their South Africa operations. And uh, because of that, if they can be able to still be focused in terms of how they approach their business, it's definitely going to be able to affect their bottom line. And as at now, their concern has been yeah. their insurance performance which has been affecting into their bottom line and hopefully they can be able to concentrate a bit in terms of their their core areas of business as well as uh, diversify it might be able to strengthen them and uh, hopefully we are going to be seeing a lot of performance on that stock and uh, looking at it in terms of the share price it's already moving up and indicating that uh, the, the stock is going to be promising.